Jim, and thanks to the crowd for inviting me here today. Um, Jim has been telling me what a fantastically engaged and professional audience you are, so I expect a lot of you here today. But um, first off, uh, you probably all know uh, the SUVs, and I would actually like to know how many of you are driving an SUV today or have been driving an SUV, and please try to be honest. Let me see your hands up. Okay, about 10 people and probably around 30 people lying, but that's, that's, that's okay. Um, because the SUV probably isn't the most favorite choice among tree huggers. It's kind of that car that sent that mixed signal of I'm killing the planet, and if I drive into you, I'll be okay, and you probably won't be okay. So what's really exciting is that if we look at a struggling European economy, and we see people tend to go towards smaller cars, more fuel-efficient cars, you would actually expect the SUV sales to have plummeted. But it's actually going quite the opposite way. So I think that's quite interesting. And if we put that together with the survey that uh, Jim just talked about, that 70% of uh, consumers actually expect our brands to play a more meaningful role in their lives, such as combating key societal challenges. I think, um, so, so, so that, that's what consumers expect of us. Um, and when we then look at how consumers actually behave, it shows out that it's only about 15% that actually vote with the pounds in the supermarket and choose products that deliver on a sustainable, um, uh, that actually go and buy more sustainable products. So people continue driving their SUVs to pick up the children after soccer and maybe talk a little bit about recycling on the way home. So this is the, the brand gap that we need to close, the gap between intentions and actions. And if we then look at the branding side of things, and I like Seth Goodan's definition of a brand. He says that a brand is a set of expectations, memories, stories, and relationships that taken together account for consumers' decision to choose one product or service over another. So Seth Goodan thinks that we as brands, of course, can influence consumer choices. And let me just see a show of hands of how many of you believe that uh, brands are at the center of um, showing consumers a more sustainable future. So let's just see a show of hands. That's probably about eight out of ten, I would say. Um, Jim at the last crowd event actually asked exactly the same question, and then nine out of ten raised their hands. So this is something we as brands believe very much in. But if we then paraphrase the question from before and say, how many brands are then actually launching sustainable products? launching sustainable services and being vocal about sustainability? How big a number would we actually expect? Are we at the 15%? Are we at about 10%? Are we about 5%? So in a way, the same gap between intentions and actions we see at consumers might actually also be the same gap we see with brands. So why are we facing this gap? And I think, um, in that sense, consumers and brands aren't that different. It's all about um, finding, um, it's all about seeing what uh, creates this meaningful behavior. And most often that is measured in either money or in time. So if you look at uh, things like C2 emissions, if those were priced higher, more companies would probably change. If you look at a market in Denmark where you get rewarded for recycling, most Danes recycle. Um, when we here in Europe consume a lot of the pollution we hide in China, and I read a quite interesting survey the other day saying that the Chinese consumer are actually the most environmental conscious compared to the European and American consumers. So I think again, why are they that? And why do they actually have a smaller gap between what they say and what they do? I think because they see the environmental damages every day, they live in the smog every day. So, how are you going to change it? I think the big dilemma is that still, if you look at the advertising space, around six uh, billion US dollars is still put, is, is put into advertising. And all those messages more or less say consume more. 
So I think it's a little bit naive of us to think that we can change the dilemma as long as sustainable messaging is outcried and outspent. Um, so it's almost like a, a David Goliath fight. So there are brands that are beginning to talk up for sustainable uh, mindset and a sustainable behavior change, but we need to do something more about it. Um, one of the brands that have uh, been entering this space lately uh, is IKEA, and we're just going to see um, one of their latest uh, commercials. efficient LED light bulbs. Sometimes small things can make a big difference. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. So IKEA found a quite smart way to kind of bridge that gap between intentions and actions, um, between the right choice and the wrong choice, simply by removing the wrong choice. So that can be done. One of the things I hear time and time again, uh, especially for marketeers, is the challenge that my consumers simply aren't buying sustainable products, and if we look at the 15% reference, um, you could maybe give them right. But again, I think it's not that the fundamentals of marketing have suddenly changed. I think consumers actually do what we tell them. So if you're telling people and making them believe that they need a seventh blade on the racer, I'm quite sure that we can also convince them of buying a more sustainable product that delivers a more fun, healthy, sustainable lifestyle. And if not, I don't think it's because consumers aren't interested. It's probably because we aren't telling interesting enough stories. Another brand that um, we're going to see here in the States uh, in a little uh, while is Nissan. And let's just see how they have been telling this story in, I think, quite an interesting way. Electric Nissan Leaf, the new car of the year 2011. Great, so it's not all consumers that want to put this big 600 billion US dollar media space in our hands. And I saw this campaign the other day coming out of the States, it's called the Inspired Inspiration Campaign. And what has actually happened is that this is paid for by consumers. The messaging are made by consumers. So these are actually some of the messaging that some people would like to see out there. Ordinary people do extraordinary things. And when you change, the world changes. So I think it's quite amazing that people actually put their own money towards seeing a different media space. And this brings me to one of the bigger challenges again. I don't know if you read uh, George Monbiot's uh, article in the Guardian Sustainable Business. And um, he put it quite nicely and said, let's stop hiding behind recycling and be honest about consumption. So how are we going to change consumption? And I think most brands are uh, still um, kind of picking their sustainability battles, talking a little bit about a fair trade label maybe out about a plastic bag or recycling. And in essence, I actually call this the bullshit forest, because what we do is that we focus on the smaller incremental differences instead of actually looking at the bigger transition, at the bigger change, that something needs to do about consumption. And um, normally when I talk with clients, I kind of use this model to see how far people are on this journey. And the further up you go, um, the less bullshit. 
So it starts with telling consumers about what you're doing, involving consumers in this journey, showing your consumers true products and services that are more sustainable, to in the end to actually find out new ways of engagement, of new ways of uh, consuming. Milton Friedman uh, is kind of challenging the way we look at consumption today, and he called it a Ponzi scheme. And he argues that the young generation are looking at consumption differently. He says that people aren't buying uh, the DVD with a movie, they actually just want the movie. He says that you know, they aren't interested in buying the drill because what they essentially just want is a hole in the wall. So can we look at consumption where it's more about experiences, fulfilled needs, than actually owning stuff? And I think that's quite an interesting question. And are we brands ready for that? Uh, one of the brands that have gone in that direction is uh, Mark and & Spence, and, and we're just going to very, very shortly see it to keep within the time frame. What I think is that we're so resourceful and that when big brands like Marks & Spencer actually get together with NGOs such as Oxfam, it shows the, um, a, a sense of responsibility. I'm a person that usually wears trousers and so sometimes I've bought dresses in the, in, the <laughs> in the vain hope that I might be a girly sort of person. I like um, sort of ethnic prints and this and I like cotton and it's, it is a summer dress but it's black so it's unusual. This is what I would have loved to be if I was another person. We never like to say we're... This goes on for, um, for a bit, but um, I'll have to cut through to this. But um, if we look at where brands can actually play uh, a more meaningful role, I actually think there's so many um, easy ways one can do it. And this is just four examples from my own life, actually. One thing is quality. So it's an old school uh, term. Why not make things that last longer? I grew up in Denmark. I grew up with Lego bricks. And at the moment, my parents have those Lego bricks at the attic. And when I get children, they'll play with those Lego uh, bricks. And how many toys today will actually last a generation, two generations, three generations? So quality, an easy place to start. Convenience, why don't we just make it much easier for consumers to do the right thing? Uh, every Monday morning, I receive a box with fresh farm produce, uh, locally sourced. But furthermore, it actually comes with recipes. And all the stuff in the box is measured towards those recipes. So when I get home from work, normally I would be stressed about what I needed to buy. It's all there, I, uh, and I can cook it. It uh, cuts down on my food waste. And what's even more interesting is that uh, because I don't go so much down to the supermarket, it actually also saves me money. So I think it's those types of stories we need to look for, where um, we can tell a more interesting story, where we can tell consumers that they save money, show them a new way of consuming. Um, and I believe that the brands that will manage in this space are the ones that dare to fail faster, that dare to try new innovative approaches. And we saw the SUV in the beginning, and I think this is just an example of how one can go about it if one uh, dares to dream a little bit bigger. This is um, Tesla's answer on the SUV, and I think if, even if you are a tree hugger mum, you can actually show up at a football match and pick up your kids in this one. Um, and so it's all about, I think, daring to try out new stuff. And, and I actually like this uh, quote, attacking a problem that's twice as big or ten times as big is not twice or ten times as hard. So I think it's about maybe sometimes dreaming about leaving bullshit forest of incremental changes and actually try to look for new business models and new way of engaging consumers. And just to wrap up this little pep talk, um, I want us all to kind of say these two sentences. So at three, are you ready? One, two, three. We have been part of the problem. We want to be part of the solution. I don't think consumers would really believe you. It was like I could barely hear it. <laughs> should, should we try again? One, two, three. I can stand up. Come on, yes. Come on. Yeah. Are you ready? One, two, three. We have been part of the problem. We want to be part of the solution. Thank you.